Hey gang, it's the last of the Pitneyless episodes. He'll be back next time. But first, please enjoy this supersized hangout with me and an old high school friend I've been calling Frito since the night we met. And the saint I feature this week is the glorious Catherine of Siena. I know I say this every week, but you're going to love her. Happy, so special this episode. You have no idea. I have a very, very special guest. He is not only a listener, but he is an old friend of mine. And I and I want you guys to all be as excited as I am <laughs> to welcome my friend Frito, the Frito Man. Hello, Say, everybody. Yay! <laughs> the Frito is here. Oh my God! I have known him. Almost as long as I've known Pitney. Wow. Well, yeah, because I was 14 when I met Pitney, and I was, I guess, 17 when I met you. Well, yeah, have... fall, of, fall of 86, I guess. Yeah. It was, yeah, it would have been my senior year of high school, and I met him my freshman year. Wow. Which was, and then my senior year was your freshman year. Yes. Frito yep. was in the same grade as my sister. <laughs> yep, and it's and I, you know, it's and it's a it's a good thing that that you and I met because um, I I think that um, you're you're the sister that I would have gotten along with best and have so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's true. I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't um, I, I don't know that if that if that happens often to to other people or not, or, or that you know that they get a chance to discover that um, you know that the. The sibling that they already know is not necessarily the one they want to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, th- th- and you know, it's weird. Like, uh, th- there were people. I mean, gra- now, granted, you know, since I moved around a lot as a kid, like I didn't. My older sibling, because she's six years older than me, there was only one year that I went to a school that she went to, mm-hmm. and. So there was only, that was the first time that it was, you know, that I was her sister, that, that, that I was known to be like, yeah, I wasn't just me. I was someone's sister. Right. Because they knew her first. So that, so that was kind of annoying. But then when I, you know, that was, that was at my, my old high school. And then when I moved to Texas, by the time, you know, I was, I was in high school as my own person again, but by the time I was a senior, even though my younger sister was a freshman, people, more people knew her, even though she was an incoming freshman and I was someone's sister again. Well, I mean, to be fair, your, your, your younger sister is, um, kind of, kind of extra. Um, (laughs) and, um, well, and and was doing like the the stuff that popular kids do. She was like you know, in the, student the, council, the, the, student, the student council, and the um, class president. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If, was she was she class president too? I don't, I don't know. But, she, but but could have been. You know, she and that guy Abel. Uh, she they they kind of fought it out. My memory was that they were always vying for class president like from one year to the next i don't know yeah that there's usually it's usually um it 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 seems like it's and i you know having been a high school teacher it's um i would say that it's usually two kids that are kind of drafting off each other sure and then there's and then there's sort of everybody else yeah (laughs) i believe i believe your senior year i believe uh that guy was class president but my sister was stuco president Ah. I believe her concession, her consolation prize, was that she got to be student council president. 
Which I'm sure to her meant that she was president of the whole school and not just president of her class. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would bet that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're so not like at all in any way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that to yeah, you know, well for for to me for you know to me that was kind of that was a good thing. Um, yeah. Because you know, and and I don't know if, if somebody if if somebody's into the the whole like you know student council class president sort of stuff, that's fine. But it it just that that was always a little bit more attention than I would have wanted. Um, uh, actually, quite a bit more attention than I would have wanted. Oh God, yeah, yeah, I can't. Uh, you, yeah, I mean, I don't think I, I, I don't, I don't want that kind of attention now. I, don't, I, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, it's um, that it, it also kind of reeks of peaking too soon. Also, I feel like yeah. that that it really sets you up for a downfall if you if you have if you have too much look at me how great I am by the time you're like, say 18 years old. Um, that's not necessarily, you know, that just gives you a lot, a lot farther to fall at a much younger age than the rest of us have. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, and I try to, I, I have tried to tell kids, you know, it's like, you know, you, you, you think high school sucks and, that's a, and that's a good thing. You should think high school sucks. Oh, it is a, it is a small world. It is very limited in scope, you know, you, yeah. and and you should kind of want to get out there and and meet new people and and you know experience new perspectives and and you know and do all that stuff. You know, you're you're supposed to you're supposed to be kind of miserable because that's that's sort of what <laughs> kicks you out into the world right. to to find what's what's right for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's sort of so a, it's like a concentrated microcosm of the way the world is, but sort of an artificial construct so that it's, it's like reality, but not really. And so you, you know, just cause you're not good at it in high school doesn't mean you're not going to be good at the world. It's just, it's like, well, it's just like a weird little testing ground and it's just, you know, it's it's gonna be over in a couple of years, and then you can move on to other things. Just just get through it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well. That's that's why I, I I feel so bad for for kids that you know that that really kind of you know kind of do a number on themselves because they're because they're unhappy in high school. You know, it's like I I wish I wish more people or I wish more adults, frankly, would admit. Look, high school is not reality. You know, oh, it, it's it's not even it's not even related to reality. The only thing that you have in common with the kids that you went to high school with is that you're about the same age and you live in roughly the same area. You know? Oh my god! <laughs> and that's and that's kind of it. And you're just sort of crammed together, herded together with with, right. with all these people. And it, you know, later on, you're you know, hopefully, you're kind of gonna be naturally. You know, it, it'll it'll happen a little bit more organically that you're sort of yeah. grouped with your with your kind of folks, you know. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, even it's. I mean, even if you think about if if the high school kids looked at their parents, it's like okay, think about all the adults, like all the families that live like on the same block. Do all those adults hang out together? No. No. They all live in like the in the exact same area. And they don't hang out. That's like, I mean, that should show them something right there. It's like th these, these little things don't actually mean anything. You know, it's nice. It's nice if they do. It's nice if that works out that you, that you really like your neighbors or whatever, but that doesn't, you know, just cause you live next door to somebody doesn't mean you're going to like them or that you have anything in common, except that you happen to have bought houses near each other. Well, and it's and it's it's honestly not super important that you like them, you know. You, yeah. you don't you don't have to have a real relationship with them. Yeah. Much, you know. I mean, there, you know, different neighborhoods work different ways, but 
as far as it being like a survival thing where you you know where you've got to like band together with the people around you that's that's not really that's not really how it works no you, know? you, you, you need to you not be an asshole the... you just need yeah. to not be a dick right <laughs> uh but high school so we we met it was an art club party right I did did you do theater too? Didn't you also do theater? I I didn't really do theater, but I hung out with all the theater people. Yeah. But I mean cuz like we 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 like painted sets for the theater people and stuff because the art teacher and the theater teacher were friends and their yeah. class their classrooms were on the same hall. So we all kind of, we all kind of hung out. There was like three teachers that all got to be chummy. So like all of their students kind of got chummy with each other. And oh, the that that hallway where we painted that mural that got painted over like yes. right after I graduated. Those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> that took that took a long time and a lot of work to paint that mural and then someone just decided, eh, <laughs> it's like, right. how dare you? How fucking dare you? <laughs> you gave us permission to paint a mural at a school, and then you went, and then you went, nah, we don't need a mural. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, did it not have enough Confederate soldiers in it for you? Was that the problem? Oh man, <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, think, don't... I don't think they approved our subject matter. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> well, I mean, you know the the people that. Um... Like, well, like the the people that we went to high school with that like never, ever left. Yeah. Um, they're they're still mad about uh, them, you know, changing the mascot and oh, um, and getting rid of all the Confederate stuff. Oh god. You know, but you know, it's and it's and it's one of those things that like, you know, when like when I was a kid going to school, it just I. Did, I wasn't really invested in in who our you know what our mascot was anyway. I mean, we we could have been almost anything, and it wouldn't have made a bit of difference to me one way or the other. Right. But like, <laughs> but but you you look back at it, and it's like, well, you know that that area w- had like zero to do with the Civil War. So there's so there's no there's right. no like ongoing history, and the and the school district. Yeah, was it's not formed, that Texas w- wasn't, but that but. Like locally, yeah, yeah, locally, yeah, like, like was that nothing. particular area, and and like, and the guy yeah, that but, school was named after also had nothing to do with it. Right. Yeah. He, he actually yeah. he actually quit. Um, he actually quit the army when the Civil War broke out, and 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 right. moved. Right. Um, <laughs> and um, you know, specifically so that he wouldn't have to fight in it. Um, and but then you know then then you get into stuff like okay, well the. The, our school district was consolidated um, like right after MLK's assassination, you know. And, oh, I didn't know that. And, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like 1968, and then the high school started in 69. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the towns in that area were, you know, what are what are referred to as sundown towns. Right. You know, and like, and then it starts to all like fall into place. It's like, our, okay, our you know, it's like we weren't there. They weren't nodding to any kind of historical context. They just they just adopted all that stuff just to be dicks, right? You know, and right. it's like we, you know, <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know anybody that, um, you know, that is into all that Civil War imagery that you know that where it comes from a a really well considered well thought out um you know compassionate pure motive kind of place you right. know it's like on on some level on, on some level you're just you're kind of trying to be an asshole oh my god <laughs> and the, and the 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 iconography like the the confederate flag and whatever i mean it was so proudly displayed that even as approaching the campus for the very first time as I was like getting registered for school when we first moved there, the first thing I saw 
was the giant flag painted on the press box over the football stadium, which yeah. in Texas, that is a big thing. I mean, like that is the first thing you see. And, you know, because it's the most prominent feature on any school is the football stadium. And the right. Like, press yeah. box. And it was like, what the hell is that? Like I had no, I didn't know what the school was going to be called. I didn't know anything because we literally had just landed in Texas the day before. And we were just, I'm just getting driven out to the school and went, Oh my God, where the hell are you taking me? This is not acceptable. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was terrifying. (laughs) And I, I was constantly just being like, I, I think I didn't, well, I also, I, you know, I'd never taken any kind of U.S. history because I was, you know, I was 15. And U.S. history was something that in my previous school district in California, you didn't touch U.S. history until like your junior year of high school. Just because everything is, or, or, you know, every school district has their own way of organizing, you know, what order do you take different subjects in and whatever. And there was a lot of stuff that I just missed. You know, I didn't take, I I didn't even take pre, you know, Civil War or earlier history until college because I just got, I just, they, they just sort of, that high school just sort of shrugged and said, eh, she doesn't need it because I didn't have it my freshman year, which I would have if I'd been here. Mm-hmm. And they just went, eh, it's okay. <laughs> And because I had taken a class that was called World Cultures for my, like, civics requirement, you know, for my social studies requirement in California, they gave me a pass on world history in Texas, so I didn't take world history either. They just stuck me in Coach Wilkes' uh, American history class, where I got to... Where I got to learn how people don't like Catholics and stuff. That was the first time right. I actually I got to hear someone talk about that. And hear it from someone who had very strong opinions on it and agreed with it. And it was really weird <laughs> to be sitting in school and, <laughs> and being like, I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> and he yelled at me because I wouldn't call him sir. That was... <laughs> First semester in particular of school, of high school in Texas. Oh, God, it was amazing. I just, like, I was so uncomfortable. (laughs) I was like, where the hell am I? I don't like these people. Except for my art class. (laughs) And as a, you know, and, like, it's not like you're, like, even as a kid, it's, it's not like you're completely ignorant. It's like art, I mean... I, I guess some people just it's just kind of how things are, but like, I I never thought it wasn't weird, you know. Yeah. And I just didn't. I just I just don't think I really understood like how weird it was. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> um, you know, and you you know you find that out later when you're when you're an adult and you you know you your world expands a little bit and you go wow that, that man that was really that was, that really was strange. pretty that was pretty fucked up. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty fucked up right there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, when, when you, all, all you know is, this can't be right. This can't be what, this can't be normal. Yeah. But, but you don't really have, yeah, you don't really have the experience to know what normal, well, yeah, fuck normal. I don't know what normal is. But <laughs> well, and and, and it, you know, I'm not. I'm still not sure that that normal isn't imaginary. You know. <laughs> yeah. It it kind of at, at this point in my life, it kind of feels like a fake idea. Yeah, I used to. Th- I used to think in terms of, well, like I I used to think about if I was to say like who, like I used to think of normal as being like an equivalent of ordinary. Sort of like yeah. if, if that that was the close, like, you know, something that seemed ordinary or beige, if it were, you know, yeah. as, and then, so I, you know, if, if I could try to imagine like people that were like 
the best example or certain things that were like a really good example of that. And then I kept thinking, but God, if that's what normal is, then that's terrible. That's a goddamn shame. You know, that's, that's just really not, <laughs> you know, because I would think that like, say for like my older sister would be someone that I would classify as the ordinary or beige type person. Yeah. And, I think you and, know, maybe normal is maybe normal is one of those things that's kind of like average. It's like you can be you can be closer to the average or farther away from the average, but but nobody's like dead on. You that's know. a good point. That's per, that that's like no like, no one represents the average. Yeah. It's just an idea. That's that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to be normal anyway? <laughs> I used to think I wanted to be normal, but then it's just like, no, I like, I like my, my, my weird bumpy edges. I think my, <laughs> my, my weird puzzle piece edges that are hard to fit with <laughs> that don't seem to fit into other ones. <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it partly has to do with, um, you know, when, you, well, when you're younger, it's, it's like they, they make it harder to not be normal. Um, and when you're a younger person, you don't necessarily have the tools to, to kind of turn, come to terms with, with not being normal, you know? Right. I mean, you can, like, you can say, you know, screw you, I'm going to be me, but you, <laughs> you, you don't really have the wherewithal to, to live into that. And I think until you, you know, until you maybe get a little bit older, um, because they're, you know, on, yeah. on some level, you know, being on the outside, you know, still, you know, they, it's like they, they keep finding ways to make it stink, <laughs> you know. the skull of St. Valentine, I thought it was a good idea to stick with heads in reliquaries for a bit. And Lord knows there are quite a few of them. But few have as interesting a story as St. Catherine of Siena. First of all, she's not just a skull. Nope, she is a gorgeous mummified head in a nun's wimple that was literally stolen from her grave so she could return to her hometown. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Ahead. <laughs> anyway. So, way, way back in 1397, right as the Black Plague was killing folks left and right, a pair of twins was born in the Italian town of Siena. The twin named Catherine survived. In fact, she was the 25th baby born to that family. And half of those kids didn't survive childhood. Because, you know, the Middle Ages and plague and stuff. And one of her older sisters died at age 16, leaving her husband a young widower. And Catherine's parents offered him Catherine to make up for it. Well... Catherine wasn't having any of that shit. She angrily cut her hair off super short, locked herself in her room, and flat refused to marry the dude. And when that wasn't quite enough to seal the deal, she claimed that she was already married to Jesus. But not in that way that nuns are. No, see, Catherine was a mystic who had visions, mostly because she didn't eat a lot. 
And one time she had a really elaborate vision where Jesus married her and put his foreskin on her finger as a wedding ring, while the Virgin Mary smiled in approval. I mean, only Kathy could see the fleshy ring, but she said it was there, and that was good enough for everyone else. Guess that means Jesus is into butch chicks with buzz cuts. Oh, and before I move on from the foreskin, uh, artists never quite knew how to depict this wedding. Like, sometimes Catherine would be shown with Mary and the baby Jesus, and he's putting it on her, and that's, you know, weird, because he's a baby. But then some paintings show an adult Jesus. But does that mean dude's been carrying around the calamari in his pocket, just waiting for the right girl? I mean, it's weird either way. And then there's the whole thing about Jesus's foreskin being an actual holy relic that got passed around for hundreds of years, popping up here and there, getting looted during the sack of Rome. <laughs> Sack. <laughs> anyway, Google holy prepuce sometime if you've got a few hours to kill. Anyway, Catherine kept on having lots of visions throughout her life, including stigmata that nobody else could see. But, you know, she was a really powerful and brilliant woman who brought about reform in the church, created a monastery for women worked with the sick and the poor, counseled political prisoners, brokered peace deals between warring Italian city-states, and dictated prayers and hundreds of letters known as her dialogues that led to her being named a doctor of the church in 1970. Keep in mind, we are talking about a woman in the Middle Ages who was a little bit cuckoo, and only lived to age 33. Just like her invisible husband, J.C., only, if I'm being honest, her accomplishments are way more impressive than his. So, when Catherine died, she was buried initially in a cemetery near the church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva in Rome. And a few years later, after miracles kept happening around the side of her grave, there was this plan to move her body to a fancy sarcophagus inside the church, which meant the perfect opportunity for her Dominican confessor, Raimond di Capua, to secretly organize a grave robbery where a couple men could steal her head and take it back to her hometown of Siena. Legend has it that when the guards stopped these men and asked them to show them what was in the bag, the grave robbers prayed to Catherine for help. And when the guards looked into the bag, they saw no head, just a bag filled with rose petals. And those petals remained in the bag until they reached the church in Siena, where her head reappeared. Now, originally, her head was placed inside a bronze bust made to sort of look like her, I guess. And I'm not sure when they decided to just go with displaying her fabulous incorrupt head. But since at least the early 1900s, the head wearing a white wimple has been displayed in a tasteful reliquary surrounded by gorgeous artwork in her own little mini chapel inside Siena's Basilica of Santo Domenico. Also displayed in a separate reliquary is her thumb, and I have absolutely no idea why they have it there. 
except to give us all a big, hey, good job, guys. And in standard saint fashion, bits of her are all over the place. Three fingers and her left foot are at a church in Venice. Another church in Rome has a hand and a shoulder blade. And a church in Florence has one of her ribs. And of course, the rest of her is still in that sarcophagus in Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. Oh, St. Catherine, the mummy lover in me can't get enough of your taut, dry-ass face. I am so thankful your devotees were wacky enough to steal your head from your grave. And thanks for protecting this odd assemblage, as you are the patroness against fire and illness and miscarriage and for nurses, people ridiculed for their faith, for Italy and, weirdly, for the United States. I don't know what we did to deserve you. I think part of the reason that some kids stay clueless for as long as they do is that they don't they don't know what they don't know. Um, oh God, yeah, that's well, yeah, obviously and, that's true for everybody, but yes. And if I mean, and if you like, if you leave high, if you if you graduate from high school and then you and then you don't like nothing about your life really changes, you know, like um, oh. you know, you know, maybe you you know, maybe you marry somebody. But like you don't move very far from your folks' house, and like if you if you get the if you get the job at the gas station that's down the street, and you live, you never really you don't leave your town, and you still dating that girl from high school, and your life pretty much doesn't change from the way it was when you graduated. Yeah, like the yeah. only the only thing different is that you're not going to school every day. You're you know you're yeah. going to work. Yeah. Um. But. But you, you know, you're still basically hanging out with the same people and doing the same stuff and talking about the same things and and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And there's and there's no reason for you to, I don't know. I guess there's there's no impetus for you to really learn much. Um, you're kind of <laughs> learning you know, never done me no good. <laughs> well, no, but you're. I mean, you're just you're just kind of, I guess, kind of done. You know, it's like you you're able to function in the you know the the five mile radius that you're in. And and that's enough. Well, and you're you know? and you're obviously comfortable because yeah. if you were uncomfortable, you would have done something about it. Yeah. But by the time, but if you if you get stagnant like that, then you if you wait till you're you are uncomfortable, then enough time has gone by that it's like you you are kind of you're like stuck up to your knees, like you've sunk into the mud far enough that maybe you don't yeah. have the ability to get out now because well, you've or, sunk. Or you- or you can, but it's going to take a lot more energy and a lot more, you know, determination and willpower than than it would have otherwise. Right. You know? uh. So, but but yeah, and so but I think a lot, you know, a lot of oh, like well, like especially when we're if we're talking about like, you know, high school kids that are you know that are dating or whatever, you know, it's like there's uh. there's so much that they don't know or don't realize or or whatever. I mean, not that yeah. I really had any experience being one of those people, but I can imagine. And well, and just like only once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very briefly. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I, but I think there's a lot of, um, you know, with high school with high school kids especially, I think there's a lot of you know blind leading the blind kind of kind of stuff going on. Um, oh God. And you know, it's like they don't. There's a lot they don't know, but but how would they know, you know? And if they if they look around at the kids around them and they go, well, she seems to know a lot. And it's just like, based on what? Yeah. Wow, she seems to have a lot of experience. It's like, okay, experience? Experience in what way? You know, it's like, yeah. that, that doesn't mean she knows, knows what the fuck she's talking about. Yeah. But right. you, like, but like, but it's more than you know. So let's go talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is you know, and and, that, and I think that's that, that's that's the kind of the mess that a lot of people end up with. You know, it's, yeah. and if you're if you're just going by, well, you know, everybody knows they have a lot of experience, but 
you know, it's like they don't they don't ever put that together that that that's you know that's sort of like having evil can evil as your driving instructor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's you know is it experience that you really want to draw on you know sure <laughs> or I or mean, may, would yeah. would maybe a saner perspective be be a better way to go <laughs> right i mean you know not to take us on a tangent but like you know the art you know a very strong argument against say abstinence education being that if you did want to know something and school sure as fuck isn't going to tell you anything, then the only thing you know is, hey, that person seems to have had a lot of sex. I guess I'll right. go talk to them. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Is that the one your parents want you talking to? Or or would you maybe be more comfortable in an environment where actual, like, information, <laughs> like vetted, actual, real useful information is being given rather than what some guy says. Well, and, and truthfully, and I, I and I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to get into to slut shaming or anything, you know, and I, and, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, if, if something's consensual, whatever, um, what consenting adults do is, is their business and, and whatnot. But, you right. know, for one thing, these mostly aren't adults. Um, and yeah. so legally are unable to consent. Um, but you know, the the other thing is, if if your only, you know, basically if if your only response that you've been taught is, don't do it, it's then it's you don't really have any, you know, there's there's no scale to to make any judgment calls on. Yeah. You know? I mean, you you can't, you know, if if you've, if all you have is well, if you do it, you're going to hell then right. you don't you don't really have any like okay is this a healthy relationship or an unhealthy relationship you know is this is this it doesn't matter we you can't touch the pee pee as long yeah. as i don't touch the pee pee everything's fine right <laughs> <laughs> um you know is this um is this an exploitative thing or or is it not you know and and right it, and they don't know there there's no there's no room for nuance when it's don't do it is all is the only message you've been given. There is no yeah. room for actual, like the reality of what interpersonal relationships are. And yeah. so, and and so, uh, you know, what I've seen is I've seen a lot of kids do what I call, you know, throw in stupid gas on crazy fire. You know, it's like they <laughs> they 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 do one thing that's that's you know that's crazy, you know, or out of the ordinary or whatever, and then because you know they've they've been convinced that that one thing is just you know terrible and evil yeah you know then they don't feel like they can talk to anybody about you know whatever you know whatever mess they've created and so they you know make it worse because they don't they don't know how to handle it you know and and there's nobody oh, they man. can go to or they they feel like there's nobody they can go to oh man god that's just yeah that's terrifying i mean I, there and in some ways there's you know i'm kind of glad that I kind of never went down that path but because I know how I know how just stupid I was and how just, I was just utterly utterly clueless about most things but it I mean th there was a there was a lot of things that you know like in my in my weird dreamy little way the things that I wanted to happen but I'm just so fucking glad they didn't happen because oh it just would have been bad because I didn't I didn't know anything I thought I knew all kinds of shit and it's just like no that would have been awful and and the kind of the kind of uh romantic ideas well you know anything that anything that falls under the category of romantic is generally a bad idea in reality because it's not most things that are classified as romantic in music or movies or literature or whatever is unhealthy and creepy and weird and <laughs> there's always something very very wrong with it i mean am, am i wrong you're the you're the english teacher uh it, am i am i wrong that romance literature started as basically the whole point of romance literature is people who are married to other people, but they're pining for each other. 
That's that's a lot of it. Yeah, the the whole um, Abelard and Heloise letters and 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 a lot of that. You know, that's that's kind of a classic thing. Is that people are, you know, committed or supposed to be committed to somebody else, right. um, but they're kind of forced into this platonic thing that they can never act on. You know, and sort of it's sort, right. of, sort of that that pain of of you know desire that is that is necessarily unrequited for whatever reason. Right, the, the ultimate example of the romantic relationship is wanting something you can't have. Yes. Which just on just automatically is why is that that seems like a weird thing to aspire to, but that's like the beginning of of where all of this really unhealthy shit, <laughs> you know. I mean, surely I'm I'm sure there was plenty of unhealthy shit before that obviously but you know to put unhealthy shit on a pedestal like that did not help anybody and then you get teenagers who don't know any better i mean i only just recently within the last you know year or two realized that most of the music i listen the schmaltzy romantic music i listened to as a kid was not preparing me for healthy relationships at all so you know like when the episode we did about like you know Anne Murray and mm-hmm. and you know like all the schmaltzy songs from the seventies that were basically describing um, abusive or at the very least un- just mildly unhealthy relationships and power dynamics that were fucked up and whatever, but just the idea that it, as a teenager, what I had in my head of oh that would be so romantic was really not good and i'm really lucky that i never got what i wanted because what i wanted was not good <laughs> well and and i and i think that's I, I i it sounds facetious when i say it um but i but i really do believe it that that um i think i think in some ways um like especially when it comes to that kind of stuff i think i think being miserable is kind of an important part of being a teenager. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> um, because it, because it helps shape like, okay, is it, you know, what, what's reasonable and right to want, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the, what we think of as like the romantic gesture or whatever is that's not sustainable. You know, I mean, those, those, those yeah. romantic things are, are great and all, but you know, if it, but if it happened every day, it would get to be routine and it would get boring. It you would know, lose and, the magic. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I mean, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes romantic is, is coming home and finding the dishes done, you know? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. Or, you know, or something like that. And, um, I don't know. It's like, oh um, my god, is all the laundry done and put away? Yeah, right. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That kind of thing. And and so I don't know. I, I think that um you know, the idea that you on some level have to be um I don't know, that that it has to follow a certain script, I guess. You know, I mean I, I've yeah. um certain you know both as a both as a student and as a teacher um i've i've known kids that like they they felt like their life should have a certain amount of drama and so if it oh. wasn't already happening they would just sort of create it you know it's like i i oh. need a crisis there i i and if there's not one already then i will make one you know yeah which kind of tells me that their parents are drama people yeah yeah that there's a lot of yelling in their house <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah how how will you know i if how how will you believe that i love you if i'm not yelling at you all the time right <laughs> because the only way you understand is is if we is if we fight a lot so we can make up after because making up is the only way i can show you that i love you it's like uh, yeah. yeah whereas Whereas some of us are like, no, yelling bad. No, I don't ever want yelling. Do not raise your voice ever. No, please don't. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 not? see if we can get through all this without yelling. And <laughs> <laughs> can, can we have no yelling ever? That would be great. <laughs> yeah. I was, and 
I was I was just thinking the other day, as a matter of fact, that like I was, I was in my head, I'm like going through all the like the romantic comedy movies that I've seen, which I I have not remotely seen them all. Yeah. Um, you know, like ju- like just about every romantic comedy uh, would be better, I think, if there was like a werewolf in it, you know, or <laughs> <laughs> something like that. You know, that that would that would that would liven things up. Um, but. Um, what you know? What I realized when I, I was kind I think of, we need to write a movie. <laughs> hell yeah! But you know, kind of what I was thinking about was like, okay, you know, really, in, in just about every romantic comedy that I could think of, um, and I'm you know, there I'm sure there are exceptions, but like in just about every one that I could think of, you know, usually one, you know, if not both, at least one character, you know, of the of the main couple is kind of an asshole. Oh god, you yes. Know? Oh um, god, yes. And it's, you know, and it's and the and the movie is not yeah, sometimes the, you know, they're more of an overt asshole and they become less of an asshole like later on in the movie and that's like kind of their journey or whatever. Right. But most of the time, I mean, you get to the end of the movie and that person is still kind of an asshole, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and you know, everything is just kind of aligned to you know, to sort of to make room for them being an asshole, you know, I don't know. Oh God. Yeah. It's either, it's either the guy, the guy's kind of an asshole and she doesn't like him. And the guy just has to keep assholing at her until, until it wears her down Mm -hmm. or she's just awful, but he wants to get in her pants anyway. And so, so, you know, something has to happen for her to, I, yeah, it's yeah, it's just always. I mean, but that's part of the whole, you know, the the belief. Well, I mean, obviously there always has to be a conflict, or else you don't have a story. But the lazy way to write a conflict is okay. He's a jerk. Let's okay, yeah. all stories start with okay. He's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> How are we gonna make her fall in love with the jerk? It's just like okay, well that can't be every movie though. Except somehow it is. But then it really does kind of set us up for where all of us are like, uh, it's, you know, all of, all of, you know, especially women are like, we get into that, we get stuck in that thing where we're realizing, oh, am I trying to rehabilitate another jerk? God damn it. It just keeps happening. I saw the funniest meme uh, today. Well, I guess it wasn't technically a meme. It was like a TikTok video, but someone had a, it was, someone had a video of a, like they opened their trash can and at the bottom of the trash can was a raccoon that like there was a little bit of garbage and a raccoon, a really cute raccoon at the bottom of the trash can. And there was this other woman like stitched herself to this video and she was talking, doing like a voiceover saying, what an incredible uh, metaphor for toxic masculinity. (laughs) (laughs) Because look how cute, because look how cute that raccoon is. And it's trapped. It is trapped in this big can of emotion and it it can't get out on its own. But look, I'm going to look how I'm going to help it out. I'm like, oh, look, it's so sweet. I'm going to, I'm going to tip the can over and I'm going to tip the can over and I'm going to rescue it. I'm going to save it. And it's going to love me. And it's going to be so appreciative that I helped it out. And so the, the original video, the can, they, the person tips the can over and the raccoon is just like, comes out of the can and sits there and looks really cute for about a second and a half. And then all of a sudden that raccoon attacks the person with the camera. It just, violently and then the video ends very quickly because it like as the as like a scream and then the video ends because of course he does <laughs> it's yeah. like thank you so much for saving me i hate you i hate you you know yeah. and it was like that the the hissing is the, the the hissing and attacking is the part that's missing at the end of every romantic comedy because the 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 oh isn't it cute is where the movie ends <laughs> right that's the it's like that's that's the whole cute story it's just we cut off the part at the end where it's horrible and all the fighting happens because well, and, those and people like, aren't gonna last <laughs> well, and i you know and i of course i'm i'm thinking about like the movies that came out you know while while we were you know developing our ideas of like what was and wasn't romantic you yeah. know 
And man, if you like, if you go back now and you and you are as objective as you know how to be, and you you know you I, kind of jettison. I, all I can, as much... all I can see in my head is John Cusack with a boombox over his head. That's all I can yeah. see in my head right now. <laughs> well, it, it, but if you can if you can like get past the nostalgia and and say, well, I really liked this when I was fifteen or whatever, oh. and um. And look at it objectively. Like, okay, like there's there's not a there's not a male character in in Pretty in Pink that's not a dick. You know, I mean Andy's dad Andy's dad is kind of a dick. Even Ducky 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 is a is an incel waiting to happen. Um That's true. He's still but he's still that's true. He's he's on his way, but he's but he's still I mean it's it's, it's it's John Cryer and he's cuddly. I understand that. But, yeah. but he, you know, but like, if you look at like his, his, like his actions and like objectively, like what he's doing, it's like, that's, that's not, that's not what a nice guy does. You know? That's true. I mean, he is, he is pretty hurtful a couple times because every time his feelings get hurt, he does get pretty hurtful. Yeah. But see, I'm the kind of person I'm still, I, I'm automatically team ducky because it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what he does because, because look, he's wearing a little hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, and he's, he's, and he's a got the sunglasses and the shoes. Hat. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They should. Yeah, they should redo it where where Ducky's just like a little raccoon and and you know they're they're little they're little, they're little critters. Even even one of my absolute favorites because I just fucking love it so much. Some kind of wonderful. It's one of those, yeah. it's, I, it's just so utterly wonderful, but I still like, I get so, I mean, yes, of course it's great that he ends up with Watts because Watts is just, uh, utter, utter girl crush, utter, just excellent, but he still cashed in his college fund to buy diamond earrings for fucking Leah Thompson. Yeah. And it's like, I... I can't. I can't see that as a noble gesture. I mean, even when I was a teenager, it made me angry, because it was just like, look, even if you don't go to college, that is not what you spend your money on. Don't and, don't buy her earrings. What the fuck, dude? You know, and at the at the end, spoiler alert, everybody. It's. I mean, I know it's a thirty year old movie, but you but, know, but most of you anyway, haven't you, seen you, it because it's the John Hughes movies no one's ever heard of. Right. But still, um. Eric but Stoltz, I mean, the, come on. <laughs> I guess the the thing that kind of ticked me off about that is is at the end when Watts ends up with the earrings, her reaction seemed totally unrealistic unrealistic to me. Um, oh, true, true. Yeah, because I mean, because you know, I, to me, like as I understood that character, Watts would have been like, "Okay, you're a jackass." Yeah, like, we're, we're going the, right back to the, the store. Gesture. We're taking these yeah. to the store right now, and you're you're getting the money back for these. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, you know, I appreciate the gesture, but but you've got this opportunity. You're a dumbass. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for getting the for getting these back from her, but we're getting the money back. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, like through the whole movie, you know, Watts is supposed to be like this real like voice of reality, objective. You know, kind of yeah. kind of hard headed. This is how it is, and and doesn't live in that fluffy pie in the sky world. She's not a diamond know. earring girl. In yeah, no and, way is she then, a diamond earring girl. But then at the yeah. end she totally flips and and that that seemed like that that kind of bothered me. Yeah, it 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 is definitely a movie that um even even if there was a whole team working on the screenplay, there was not a woman on that team. Yeah. Because if there was a chick in the room, she would have been, "Okay, that last scene though, can we not have her put the earrings on?" Because that's weird. Because up until that moment, she's she's fucking awesome. <laughs> well, and yeah, well, and, and and you know, let's and let's even you know, let's even have that scene where she says, you know, I I don't want your fucking diamond earrings, you know. Yeah. I that's yeah. I'm gonna put not, these in my pocket for safekeeping. But yeah. tomorrow morning, we're going back to the mall. Because. <laughs> Because you get that sense that you know if if Eric Stoltz is is like this 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 artsy you know this this artsy person yeah that you know that that she's going to be you know tough enough to to kind of offer like a connection with reality and also some emotional support like she's you know she's kind of balanced in that way that she has 
kind of a little bit of the artistic bent and also kind of more of a realistic kind of thing. Right. You know, I mean, because, you know, the rich kids in that movie are, are sort of living in their own type of fantasy world also, you know. Sure, sure. Oh, my God. So, I don't know. I mean, it, oh. uh, I don't know. I guess it's real. It's it's real easy to rewrite a bunch of that stuff. I guess. <laughs> oh yeah. Armchair oh, yeah. quarterback sort of thing. I mean, I, I still I still get mad. I mean, as much as I love the Breakfast Club, I still get mad that Ali Sheedy's character gets a makeover. Yeah. It's like no fuck you. She looked fine. There's nothing wrong with her. Yeah. Well, and 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 it that especially stings when. You know, the like the like the whole point is like, well, we're all you know confused and fucked up under the surface and blah blah blah, but then but then she's the only one that really has to change her surface, you know? Right, totally. <laughs> and you know, male or female, if if you if you are the Ali Sheedy type kid, mm-hmm. it that it totally deflates what is what I think is supposed to be the message. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's like, don't make me comb my hair out of my face. Fuck you. Yeah. Even if even if she wanted to date the wrestler, even if she wanted yeah. to, she shouldn't have to change her hairstyle. Because that was always, you know, that was always my, that was one of my, it, as, as weird as my self-esteem was in high school. And as much as I was constantly getting messages of you, you really should look different than the way you look. I was constantly getting told that. Um, the, I don't, I, I do not know where it came from, but I had a thing inside me that was always like, no, why do I have to be the one to change? Why do I always have to be the one to make the effort? Because the way I looked at it, because I, I was always being told that without doing something something anything to my hair without learning how to wear makeup right without wearing different clothes without losing 20 pounds without you know a a laundry list of things um that that no boy was ever gonna like me that you know and anything that was anything that was on the table was not accessible to me unless i did all these things to change who i was and my feeling was always, well, but if there's a guy that I like, he's not doing anything. <laughs> that, yeah. Whatever, whatever guy I like is doing absolutely nothing to get my attention, and yet he has my attention. You know, I promise he's doing nothing. Yeah. And so there's no way that I'm going to start doing backflips to get him to notice me. Because fuck him. If he doesn't notice me already, then I have no I have no time for that. And I don't know where that came from in me, but I'm glad I had it. I don't know I don't know, I don't know where I yeah. learned it, but it got me through it, it saved me through a lot of, you know, it was like the only self-esteem I had, but I, but I held on to it very tightly. But it was part of why in even as a teenager seeing Ali Sheedy having to get the black shit scrubbed off her eyes and have her her hair combed out of her face mm-hmm. made me go no fuck that she was perfect she was perfect the way she was yeah <laughs> she was totally the best character in this movie and you ruined her <laughs> <laughs> Your world can change in the blink of an eye. He walked into the bedroom and you know that she had been murdered. So he's running up and down, screaming, Oh my God, someone called 911. There are two men killing a girl. I know my son, and he would not go that long without saying anything to anyone. Safety can be an illusion and reality a nightmare. So how do you steal a person, a grown person? Unspeakable crimes can penetrate any small town, big family, pretty face, or innocent child. And in the wake of a loved one's murder or disappearance, there is nothing more cruel or desperate as silence. 
Why won't people talk about it? That's another thing. People don't want to talk about it around here. For the families of the missing and murdered, they gambled with their sanity as they lose hope in closure and settle for justice. That's where the cold case playing cards come in. In each episode of the Dealing Justice podcast, your hosts Jennifer Dubasek and Lori Jennings will spotlight one card from the cold case playing card deck. Hear the victim's story from the friends and family who knew them best. Her mom will never stop fighting until she finds out what happens to her daughter. Learn about the crime and help close the case. Welcome to season two. We're not just playing cards, we're dealing justice. You know, there's a lot of that message of, of, you know, if you're if you're this kind of person, then you know the the you, good stuff will naturally find you, and if you're this other kind of person, then you know that you need. <laughs> you need supernatural powers to, <laughs> to right to to come to to come help you. You know. Oh God, yeah that um that that happily ever after shit that gets ingrained in kids from a very young age because of the Disney fairy tale kind of thing, and it's it's been sort of on my mind a lot. Because I realized something the other day. Um, I'm very, very... I I fucking love Encanto, the new Disney movie. And yeah, anyone I, think, who's, I think that movie's really good, too. It's, it's so phenomenal. And anyone who... If you're listening and you haven't watched it, we're going to... I'm, I'm not intending to talk about it enough to spoil it. But, but I'm just going to talk about it in general terms. But... If you haven't seen it, you should watch it, but be prepared to have your heart ripped out because it is not what you expect at all. Hopefully what we'll talk about will give you an idea of why it's not what you think. The The best way I can describe it is it's a Pixar movie with music. It's like all those things that Pixar movies have gotten really good at, like, in, like Inside Out and, and Coco and all those things where you have a movie that get or, or like Luca did you did you see Luca the one that came out like maybe last year or the year before about the sea monsters um i my my kids saw that i think i only saw part of it okay i really like that movie a lot too oh my god it's so pretty that movie's incredibly pretty because it's like this little coastal italian town it's so oh, it's so gorgeous but like pixar movies have this amazing ability to like it's like they with the exception of like you know, like the cars shit or whatever they they really are good at coming up with like really deep stuff to make movies about and coming up with a way of like inside out is like so brilliant like giving kids vocabulary for talking about their feelings and stuff and right. and disney movies kind of didn't do that you know disney movies tended to be a little fluffier and even when they got more serious they didn't tend to be like that well Encanto is is way more of a in the Pixar vein than in the Disney vein because it is on well on one level it's about generational trauma and about how a family can be affected by what happened a few generations ago and how the matriarch of a family can put all this pressure on everyone who comes after her because we have to keep the family together and everybody has to do their part and everything has to be perfect. And, and, and then there's also this, I mean, if you know anything about it at all, it's like everyone in this family has some kind of magical gift. And when I first watched it, you know, the main character, her whole thing is that she doesn't have a gift. And I remember my first thought was, you know, like her whole thing, like, oh, she doesn't feel special. Everyone else is special and she doesn't think she's special. And I remember thinking, oh, I feel like I really identify with her because she doesn't, because in her family, she's not special. And I felt like, oh, I really identify with her. And then the first time we get to really know one of her siblings, the first thing we find out is I, I go, oh, I was a gifted kid. 
she's yeah she's petrified of of all the from all the pressure that people put on her because yeah. she's identified as being the person that can do blah 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 yeah she, that yeah. that because of what her gift is which is basically just that she's strong but because of it and if you've heard anything about this movie you've probably heard there's like there's like a, a handful of songs that are like huge right now oh my god i mean they're like charting they're enormous these songs are so fucking good and surface pressure is amazing and that's the song you can go watch it you can go watch that scene on youtube and it won't spoil anything in the movie for you but it's like by the end of that song i i thought i felt like a raw nerve like i was like oh shit like i'm crying and i'm just like oh no i was not expecting this at all and i and i kept thinking where is this movie taking me? Like I knew going in that there was going to be some generational trauma shit going on, but I didn't know that I was going to get like, like I knew that like immigrant kids, like kids of immigrants were going to have like a lot of pressure. Cause that's, that's a lot of what I had heard about the movie yeah. going in was that people were reacting to it from that. I did not expect like the idea of being being put under a lot of personal pressure of, yeah, but you're the one who can do stuff. So there's a lot of expectations on you. And then you also put all these expectations on yourself and you can never fail in anything. Yeah. Because everyone's counting on me and that you cannot give yourself a break. And if you ever don't feel a hundred percent, you feel like a complete failure and you cannot allow anyone to ever see you break and all that. And it's just like, Oh fuck. And it's like, this isn't a Disney movie, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's like, fuck. And, and there's, and you know, and, and that's just, that's just getting into it. I mean, there's way, way more than that. And I, st- and, and it's like, so this movie is kind of exploding. Like people are going insane, but I started noticing that there are people, you know, YouTubers, people that people that I follow on on YouTube that I really like and that I'm noticing some people that they're like they don't hate the movie but they don't seem to like it that much and I'm I've started to figure out I'm I'm noticing a pattern the people who they it's not that they don't see value because they're like no the movie is beautiful it's well written. The music is outstanding, but I just don't like it. And it's like, and I think I figured it out. There's no princesses in it. And these people, the one thing I'm noticing that all these people have in common is they seem to really like princesses. Like people who are really, really into Disney. And if they really like Disney princesses a lot, like they're really into Cinderella and Snow White and Belle and Little Mermaid and shit. It's like, oh, they're that kind of a person. And I, and it really got me thinking about how, yeah, I've never, ever, even as a kid, I wasn't a princess girl, ever. And I mean, my favorite movie from the time I was a little, little kid was Jungle Book. That's as far from a princess movie as you can get. Right. I mean, there there isn't even a female character until the very end. And she shows up and she bats her eyes and she walks away and that's it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, I guess. Okay. I guess the, I guess the wolf was a female wolf. Yeah. I guess she would have to be his mama wolf, but you know, but she was barely in it either. But it's like, you know. Movies like that were the ones that I liked. You know, Fantasia. <laughs> yeah. You know, I really was not, you know, like I liked, the, there were songs in Cinderella that I liked. There was, there was things about Snow White that I liked, but I thought those stories were creepy and weird. And I, even as a child, I didn't like them. You know, like I would watch them, but I didn't, I, I always knew that there was something like that I didn't that didn't sit well with me about those stories and I think I think there's a hard line you can draw between princess people and not princess people and I mean you're a dude so you're probably not a princess person and I'm assuming your kid isn't a princess person (laughs) there there are there are I mean there are some of those movies that I like um like um 
I've I, like I've always liked the, the um, I've always liked the movie Sleeping Beauty, but oh. it's not. But it's not because of Sleeping Beauty or Prince Charming. To me, those are the two least interesting characters in the movie. It's Maleficent. It's, it's Maleficent, man, and the Jeez. dragon. Yes, it's the animation in that movie that is the best thing well, about it. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I I love the animation in that movie, and and you know even the, um, you know even the fairy godmothers are fun. You know. Oh um, yeah, they're cute. You know, but um, but I mean, but most of the time, my perspective um, in a princess movie, the the princess is one of the least interesting characters. Yeah, you know, she's like a she's like a um, I don't know, like a um, she's a she's a steamed rice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, doesn't doesn't whole lot, doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, but it's just kind of there to fill out the, uh, the 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 dish, you know. Yeah, I was gonna um, say she's sort of a plot device in a way, but like, I, but I, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, she's, or kind of a maybe a saline solution for the other characters. I don't know. Um, <laughs> she's just sort of a reason for all these other characters to be in the same story. She, yeah, she's a MacGuffin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even you know. I mean, there, there's, I mean, there's some of the, some of the princess stories actually, I mean, like actively make me angry. Like I, like Little Mermaid has some great music in it. Like Little Mermaid, I didn't see it until way, way, way after it came out. Like when they started, when the, when the Disney movies kind of started kicking up again, I was an adult and I had no interest. And then eventually, like by the time, you know, when you had to rent them and then like all these, all these video stores had like a couple of copies of each Disney movie and they were never available because someone always had them rented out. So it it was many, many years before I ever saw Little Mermaid. And when I saw it, I was like, that's all right. Eh." I mean, I already knew all the music. I already heard most of the songs. So they were like, okay, I'm getting to see the animation that goes with the songs that I've already heard. But it was like, okay, I like, I like the crab. Yeah. I like, I like the crab and the little fish, you know, but I really don't care. I, and I like Ursula, but you know, yeah. you know, she's, what's so bad about Ursula? She's, she's no, you know, she's, she just knows what she wants. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't really have, I don't really have anything against her necessarily. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Ariel's just stupid, but even like, um, Beauty and the Beast, like I had no desire to see that, and then when I eventually did, it was like, okay, it's fine. But it's so weird because there's so many people who just love those movies so much, and it's like, I mean, it's it's okay. But there's so many things about Beauty and the Beast that are like, well, I mean, it's okay if you don't, as long as you don't think about it too hard. Because like, yeah. you know, okay, so the the castle's like enchanted because the the beast was an asshole. I mean, I understand, like, okay, the guy was an asshole, so he got turned into this beast. But because he was an asshole, that means that everyone who worked in the castle where he lived got turned into inanimate objects. Right. <laughs> Including, like, thousands of pieces of cutlery. Like, I just, I just, it's like, just don't think about it too much. And then when, and then when the spell is broken... And like, okay, so Mrs. Potts and Chip and Lumiere and the, and the, you know, the clock and whatever, like all these other, they all turn back into people, but like all the forks, all the spoons, are they all people? Like, I, how many people worked in that fucking castle? I just, it's just very weird to me. <laughs> that's like well, and, 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 you know, like that's, that's your, you know, after however many years of, of, you know, being a teapot or whatever, um, you know, your reward is that you get to go back and be a servant again, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, hey. to the guy who was the reason why you had to be a teapot. Right. It's like, oh, but it's all it's all so nice because, look, he has a girlfriend now. Yeah. Oh, isn't that sweet? It's like, I, really? That's the reward? I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll take Lilo and Stitch any day. <laughs> yeah. Over another goddamn princess movie. But even like when, even when Pixar did a princess movie, when they did Brave, it was literally a princess movie going, no, fuck you. I'm not getting married. And having, you know, and having like, you know, mother issues because Pixar 
gets gets in there. Pixar finds what you what what hurt you in your heart, and they will make a movie about it. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have, you know, adults taking their kids to go to a movie and the adults are all like sobbing and the kids are going, what's wrong, mommy? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, mean, I can only imagine how, how difficult that is for parents who are taking their kids to see, oh, we'll go to see a nice little cartoon. And then the parents are sobbing their eyes out. Because at least I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I mean, even like, you know, the Aristocats and, you know, all those... Sword in the Stone, and I mean, the Rescuers. There was a lot of there was a lot of years now that I'm thinking about it where Disney made a lot of non princess movies, and I think they're people people are like trying. I'm I'm keep hearing a lot of reviews of Encanto where people are trying to be like, hey, there's no princess in this movie. It's like there doesn't have to be. It's like yeah, it's, and, well, and, and it's it's kind of like they've. Um... You know they've 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 sort of cherry picked a handful of movies. Um, you know a lot of which are are from the 30s and 40s. Yeah. And and they've um, you know and they've kind of ignored a whole a whole raft of stuff. Um, like especially in the in the 60s and 70s. Oh my god. And um, so many good you know, movies. Ig- ignored like a whole bunch of things that um, like well especially the live action stuff. Um, oh my god. You know uh, like. Um, like the Witch Mountain movies, and, and bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah, and yeah. oh god, and like uh, Ugliest Dachshund was Disney, wasn't it? The Dean Jones yeah, and sure. um, Maybe, yeah. Michelle Lee and and like uh, all those teenage Kurt Russell movies. Those were Disney. Yeah. <laughs> the well, the and, computer and, wore tennis shoes or whatever it's called. <laughs> and you know, and and. Well, unlike Mary Poppins is a Mary Poppins is a is a weird movie and Oh it is. You know, but but the but the kind of the, the ultimate point is, you know, be involved with your kids. You know, parent your kids. You know, don't just don't just hand them off to somebody else. Oh, God. You know? Yeah. Um don't, your kids you know, want you to pay attention to them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Don't don't get so into the rat race that um that you forget about what's important you know um yeah your kids is... being occupied all day is not the point right <laughs> yeah it's like well if we, if we have someone fun in the house to keep the kids busy maybe they won't notice that we're not here <laughs> yeah yeah and that we're not paying any attention to them oh my lord yeah i mean it's a delightful wonderful movie but you know people kind of do forget that that is what the movie's about <laughs> Right. <laughs> Every time that's that my um that was a movie that wasn't that we didn't watch a lot when I was a kid because my dad has like my dad has a very strong reaction to that movie because when he was coming home from Vietnam for some reason that was the movie that was playing on the plane like a plane wow. full of GIs coming home from Vietnam and Mary Poppins was on the plane. It was like that who, whose idea was that? Like, how about no movie? How about that? Like, it's just terrible. <laughs> so he gets very, yeah. it really bothers him. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I can, on, I guess on one hand, I can, I can sort of understand that. Because, like, it's, it's a long flight. Yes. You know, and, <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, what, what would you, what would you show a bunch of people coming home from Vietnam, you know? <laughs> I mean, you want something light. You want something yeah. kind of, you know, frothy and whatever. But I don't know if, you know, maybe something with some boobs in it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe nothing but boobs. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there there were Russ Myers movies back then, weren't there? <laughs> maybe they don't, I don't have know. them on. Maybe major airlines didn't have access to those. <laughs> Well, and there, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, and and <laughs> if you, and also, let's, I mean, you got like, what, like a, a plane full of like 120, you know, guys coming back from Vietnam, and you know, half a dozen female flight attendants. Oh, true. You true. know, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know that you want them too wound up. You no, know, <laughs> that's true. That is very true. 
Can we just can we just give them all night night pills and just yeah. have them well, sleep, hey, you know. sleep the whole time? That would be better. <laughs> There's, uh, there are there are some things that I, I kind of wish that people knew when they were younger, you know, rather than like you have to really screw it up for a few years and then you, you know, <laughs> and then you figure this thing out, you know. Yeah, Which, I mean, there are things I mean, that's that... Part of, that's part of early adulthood anyway is because you're not going to listen to a lot to older people. Anyhow, I mean, but. I definitely know that there's a lot of things that... that... Well, it's kind of like we were talking about, you know, learning how to do things and how some of us need to need to play around with things in order to learn them. I also, I I need to fuck up a lot in order to learn things, but there are some things where if maybe I could have seen someone else fuck up, maybe I could have been saved by not having to experience it because I'd seen it play out for somebody else. Maybe. Instead of just being told, I don't know. I just, I just think about like, okay, if, if you're like, if you're a 16 year old dude, yeah. And some and somebody says, you know, somebody just outright straight up says to you, "Hey, you know, while you're while you're on this date, here's an idea. Why don't you you know, ask her a question about herself or her opinions or what she likes and then stick with me on this one and then you listen to what her answer is." <laughs> Oh, you well, know, now so you're just like, crazy. Then, like then, <laughs> like then, you know, then you'll, then you'll know some stuff that you can, you know, you, then you can ask another question about that, and now you're having a conversation. I mean, I, right. I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like if, if I, you know, well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think I was more of a conversationalist anyway but i you know but if yeah if, if, but if a lot of 16 year old guys like heard that when they were 16 sure you know it's like they they would have been way ahead of well they they might they might be ahead of where even where they are now you know right <laughs> because yeah like, there's 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 a lot of people that still don't really get that 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 women have you know ideas and opinions and stuff Oh, absolutely. Or even even to the point of, well, well, kind of like you know, when when people suggest that you know it's hard to teach consent, it's like no people understand consent when it's them. Exactly. You know, it's like if if you if you actually think of other people as though they're other people. Right. You know whether it's like okay, so it's a guy talking to a girl. It's like okay, but how about you're a person talking to another person, and it doesn't you don't necessarily treat her different than you would treat anyone else that you would be talking to just because you think she's cute and she's a girl and maybe you'd like to get somewhere. Okay. Set that aside for a minute and actually speak to her as though she's a human being for a minute. And you know, if, if you wouldn't put your hand there on your dude friend while you're talking to him, maybe you don't put your hand there on your girl while you're talking to her. You know, right. Maybe it's, yeah. or maybe if, if while you're talking to some guy, if you don't, if, if you would feel weird, if he put his arm around you while he was talking to you, then maybe, you know, exactly what I'm talking about right now. You know, it's like there, there aren't actually, rules for this is how you talk to a woman right it's not it's not a trick you know (laughs) it's not like there's some big secret it's actually very fucking simple well i I think that i think that kind of opens that sort of opens the door to you know all kinds of prejudice you know like right right. like you know okay like for example um you know my my kid is really into cooking shows and, and one of the shows that, um, that he likes to watch is this one where it's, where it's kids cooking. Uh-huh. Um, and, um, so that like, there's, there's one kid that, um, like I'm, you know, I'm trying to find out like what they did after the show, 
you know, like, you know, it's like, okay, well, you, you know, you, you've been on this show now, what, you know, right. and, and every, like, when, you know, when I went online to try to find out about this, what this kid was doing, everything was like, you know, is this kid a trans girl or a cis girl? And I'm thinking, you know, what, what does it matter? You know, why, why do you care? You know, because, because I, you know, you, you gotta, you know, be honest with yourself. What you're basically saying is what's in that nine-year-old's pants, you know? Wow. And, and you know, wh- like, why do you need to know? You know, it, it's kind of yeah. like, I, and I, I understand, I understand representation is important, but that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm, you know, I'm talking about right. like, you know, is this person gay or straight? It's like, well, if, you know, if you're not trying to go out with them, you don't need to know, you know, right. or care, you know? Right. Um, and I don't know, just, just how about just treat them as a human being that, that is, that's worthy of your attention and respect and, and regard and, and kind of go from there and not say, well, I have to categorize them first before I decide how to treat them. Right. And especially if, if that, when we're talking about, say, a nine-year-old, that nine-year-old just wants to be, if if that nine-year-old is a girl, they just want to be, they're like, what, I'm just a girl. It doesn't, yeah. you know, just, I, I don't want to talk about what the conversation I had with my parents a few years ago. I don't want to talk about that. I, I was like, I'm talking to you as a girl right now and nothing else matters. I'm talking about the fact that I'm cooking or what, you know, and yeah, it's like when I'm, when I'm 16, if I want to talk about something else, it's up to me to tell you that. But up until that point, none of that shit's your business. You know, that it's, and, and when it comes to representation, it's like, People, the people who are looking for representation of themselves, they will find it. Like, it doesn't have to be plastered across a billboard with flashing lights on it. Right. The kids will find themselves on, you know, if if there is a little trans kid on that show and there's a, tr- there's a little trans kid watching, the, the kid, the kid will find it. The kid will know. You don't right. have to have arrows pointing at that kid going, hey, everybody, look, look at, look at, the, look at this kid right here. It's like, no, the kids who need to see it, will see it. And it's, and it's, you know, even if, you know, even if we're not talking about, um, you know, even if we're not talking about what's in that kid's pants, which is, which is creepy, right. um, it's uh, it also it's also a little much you know no matter you know no matter what we're talking about as far as representation it's also a little much to expect a kid to carry the flag for oh, you know this group or that group or whoever yeah you know and say oh well you know I'm I'm the representative you know <laughs> some yeah. someone's voted that I'm you know that I'm king of this or that group and so <laughs> oh god oh yeah there was um. I was, in fact, this, like, even, even for adults, like, um, Jonathan Van Ness, um, has a little Netflix series. It's like a spinoff of, of their podcast. And there was an episode about gender and they were talking about like, you know, the idea that certain people simply existing in the world, simply walking down the street as themselves is considered an act of bravery. And it's like, can, can it not be though? Can't I just go to the store? Does every time I leave my house have to be a big deal? Can't I just be myself and be treated like everybody else? Or he's like, you don't have to walk up to me and tell me how brave you think I am. I'm just living my life. Right. And like to, to put that, it's weird enough for an adult to put that on a kid who's literally, they just want to be treated like, like a normal kid because they are a normal kid. You know, they 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 just happen to be a normal kid whose parents are really cool, yeah. and who whose parents who are totally open minded enough to let their kid be exactly who their kid is, which should not be such a rare thing. But apparently, it's crazy to imagine. But you know, imagine having a kid and being like, "My kid is exactly who my kid is." You know, right. 
Gender reveal parties are stupid. Yes. Yes, they are. I actually had a um, had a weird thought about, like, when... So, so on a birth certificate, speaking of gender reveals, on a birth certificate, it's basically... I mean, do, do doctors do complete inspection on an infant? Like, has the doctor gone... Is it just penis or no penis? Or does the doctor go, well, there's a penis, but let me keep looking. Like, if a baby is intersex. I I think that that has gotten... I think that's gotten better. Because... Um. <laughs> or it's like, oops, I, I think I spotted something else there. Like, I... Because I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's... If for most of history, at least, it's been penis or no penis. But it just seems like it's so clearly best guess based on penis or no penis i i i honestly i think the um i've i've been present at exactly one uh right. delivery you know and right. and and i will say well i mean technically you were present at your own but you weren't really well, paying attention yeah no i i wasn't really watching the doctor for that one um no. but um <laughs> when but you know when my um when my son was born i i do think that um that our OB checked him out a little bit more than just, you know, penis or no penis. Yeah. A glance. <laughs> which, yeah. uh, which I got to say, um, that sounds like a really bizarre game show, penis or no penis. <laughs> it would get such ratings, though. Yeah. But yeah, it makes it does make me wonder, like, how. I mean, because you know the, the the numbers of intersex kids, it's kind of like the way, you know, it, it appears like there's an increase in autism, but it's just an increase in diagnosis. It's like I'm I'm sure that there's an increase in diagnosis quote of intersex babies born, but it's like no, it's just that it has to be just that they're paying a little bit more attention than they used to. And that they're not so quick to just, because I think, I think the old way of dealing with it was just chop that off, right? It's just all intersex maybe, babies yeah. was snip your girl, I think. Yeah, maybe. Was, you know, because we have, we have to solve this problem and, you know, that this seems to be the quick way to do it. Yeah. It's, just, it's still just so disturbing to me. It's just like, how about not though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about calm the fuck down? Can can we not just remove an organ all of a sudden? Like that just seems that just seems harsh. Well, and and I I don't know. I I think that we've got to you know, maybe we have to just kind of realize that we're um you know, modern medicine is 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 still new in some ways, you know. I mean, there's there's a lot of knowledge yeah. out there, but but I you know, I think that just you know that just kind of that way of thinking is is that's you know that's kind of coming along too i mean oh yeah having the ability to chop something off doesn't mean that the thought process around it like you know well just the just because you can doesn't mean you should yeah and it's like a lot of considerations aren't i mean well like the fact that you know people aren't so quick to circumcise anymore and people aren't so quick to, you know, it's like, there's just people don't automatically jump to do things anymore. It's like, well, wait, do, do we have to do that? Yeah. You know, it's like, like it, you know, 30, 40 years ago, it's just like, well, this is what you do. Oh, okay. Well, I guess just go ahead then. You know, I, it, like people didn't consider things. And now it's like, it's so strange to think how, all it takes is, well, hang on a minute. Right. It's like, all you know, someone just has to go, well, hold on. And then, you know, and then, you know, you get a generation or two in and now it just seems like, wait, people used to do that? It's very strange. But, you know, but, but it's, but it's, you know, but it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be bitch and boutique without a discussion of circumcision. Uh, well, I guess not. Even when Pitney's not here. Let's see, this time it's my fault. <laughs> this time it's my fault. Well, you know, <laughs> s sooner or later, um, 
the all 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 roads lead to dicks um, conversationally. <laughs> um. <laughs> for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers. stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. (laughs) Sack.